I'm not seeing anything in here. Okay, there. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go over uh, a couple of things before because we have some questions that um, we 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 want to answer. Um, so we're gonna go over the electroscope because it's very important. Again, the electroscope is a is is a device that uh, can detect charge, um, and uh, you know we have two types. We talk about the gold leaf and the, the needle um, electroscope. So you have to know what an electroscope. So this is the the, the needle electroscope and. When you see a device like this and the needle uh, deviates, that means it's charge. And the charge on the needle and this vertical uh, conducting uh, bar is the same. So remember, light charges repel. Light charges repel. That is why the needle deviates. And this is the gold leaf. The charges on the leaves are the same, so they repel each other. Okay, and this is, you know, this is um, charged by uh, this. Is, okay, so what what happened? You bring a positive uh, charge object close to the electroscope. So the electroscope, you have a a, a metal or a conducting uh, plate. And uh, it is conduct. It is connected to uh, another conducting uh, apparatus here, and the leaves are also conducting material. So when you bring, say, a positive charge close to this conducting sphere, it's going to attract the electrons. The electrons are going to crowd on the plate, and the electrons going to come from from down here. So from the leaves. So electrons are going to come from the leaves and go to the plate up here. So the leaves are going to be positive. The leaves are going to have the same charge. That's why they spread apart. So you can see that the leaves spread apart. And again, this is uh, the principle of the electroscope. So if you have a negative uh, device that uh, comes in 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 uh in proximity uh again this is uh charging by induction so if it's a negative uh charge say rod it's going to repel the electrons from the the, the, the plate up top so the electrons going to go to the bottom the plates going to have the same negative charge that they're going to spread apart when they're not charged they're like this and then if you have a positive they're going to pull the electrons up from the plate. The plate's going to be positive. They're going to have light charges, and they're going to repel. So that's the electroscope. Okay, so we let's answer a, a, a couple of questions so that we can um, fully, so we have a full understanding of our, you know, charge charging by induction and the um, electroscope. So um, let's do the first question so um, let's so the first question states um, this one. All right, so the first question is uh, two um, two neutral conducting pop cans are touching each other so the, these two cans are neutral and they're touching each other a positively charged balloon is brought near one of the cans. So, positive charged balloon is brought near one of the cans. The cans are separated while the balloon is nearby, as shown. After the balloon is removed, the cans are brought back together. Uh, when touching again, can X is all right. So let's you have to work out what's going on. So this is a positive. So these two pop cans are touching each other. They are touching each other. So if you bring a positive charge here, it's going to attract the electrons from Y. So can X is going to be negative. Can Y is going to be positive, right? Because you have a positive balloon. 
opposite attract. So it's going to pull the electrons. The only thing that can move is the electrons. So electrons are going to be pulled from can Y to can X. So can Y is going to be positive, can X is going to be negative. So the balloon is still held in place. So when you separate them, can Y is going to be negative, can X, sorry, can Y is going to be positive, and can X is going to be negative. Okay, now you remove the balloon and you put them together. If you put them together, then remember, let me just draw it. You just have to work these things out. So when you bring the balloon, the positive balloon, can X, because the electron is going to move from Y to X, so, so can X is going to be negative? Can X is going to be negative? And can Y is going to be positive? Because the electrons were removed. <clears throat> okay? The balloon is still held in place. So can X is going to, let's put the, the, the negative, right? So can X is going to be negative? And can Y is going to be positive? Okay? The, by the same amount of charge, because it's, you know, the, the X amount of electrons move from Y to, 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 to X, and then the same amount, so, so this, you know, X, a certain amount of electrons is going to move from Y to X, so X is going to have the excess electrons uh, equaling the amount of electrons that were lost from Y. So balloon still the, the charge still is still in place. So this gonna be negative and this is gonna be positive. If the balloon is now removed, okay, negative positive. When you combine them together, the electron is gonna go back to Y. The electron is gonna go back to Y. So it's gonna be neutral. Okay. When the when touching again, can X uh, becomes neutral. And can Y also becomes neutral because the electron is going to move from X back to Y. Okay, so um, all right, let's let's do question number two. So question number two reads: uh, Two neutral conducting pop cans are touching each other. So there are two neutral pop cans. A positively charged Glass rod is brought near can X as shown. So positive rod is brought near can X. So it's going to, again, it's going to attract the electrons from Y to X up, because opposite attracts. So if it's going to attract the electrons, then can X is going to be negative. All right, let's. So can X is going to be negative. And can Y is going to be positive because the electrons move from can Y. Okay? A positive charge. Da, 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 da. Which of the following occurs as the glass rod approaches can X? List all that applies. Which, which occur? Which, which applies? All right. So we're going to go through them. Electrons jump from, uh, from the rod to X, no, that's because we didn't touch, and it's this is positive, right? So it has an excess of protons. It is, there is a deficiency of electrons. So the electrons are not going to uh, jump anywhere because it doesn't have excess electrons. Electron jump, electrons jump from the rod to, 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 to Y, no, because it that is a, Electron jump from can X to, to the rod? No, because we didn't touch it. We just we came in close proximity. So the electron is going to move from Y to X. So electron, electrons jump from can Y to the rod? No, that didn't, didn't occur. And then E, protons jump from the glass rod to X? No. And then F, protons, uh, 
jump, we know that proton's not going to move. The thing that's going to move is electrons. Electrons are the mobile stuff. Protons are fixed. So none of these make sense because what we know, you bring a positive rod, it's going to attract electrons. So the electrons going to crowd on can X. They're going to come from can Y. The electrons are coming from can Y because they, these are conducting materials which touch each other. All right, so I think we understand that. Let's move now to question three. So uh, true or false, uh, two neutral conducting pop cans are touching each other. So two neutral, okay. A negatively charged balloon is brought near can X as shown. So this is a negative charge balloon. We know that the, the stuff that's going to move is electrons. Protons not going to move. So this negative charge is going to repel the electrons in can X, and the electrons are going to go to can Y. So if the electrons are repelled from can X, can X is going to be positive. So, so can X is now going to be positive because it got the electrons are going to be repelled. And then because the electrons go to can Y, can Y isn't going to be negative, all right? Okay. A balloon approaches can X, uh, and there's a movement of ele electrons between, and there is a movement of electrons between the balloon and can Y in one direction. All right, so we... We we didn't it okay so we know this is charged by induction we didn't touch anything okay it approaches can X so the electrons are going to move from can X to can Y okay so there is no movement of electron between the balloon and can X there is a movement of electrons from can X to can Y so this is false okay. So you have to have these concepts clear in order to, to, to answer these questions correctly. Charge by conduction, you have to know the different types of charges. Charge by friction, charge by conduction for induction. Induction is when you come close and you don't touch. Okay? All right, let's do question four. A positively charged balloon is brought near a neutral conducting sphere as shown below. While the balloon is near, the sphere is touched. All right, so this scenario, so you, this is a sphere, conducting sphere. So this is a conducting material, and it sits on top of an insulating material. If you bring a positive charge, if you bring a positive charge, balloon close to the sphere what's going to happen okay again opposite um opposite opposite attracts and likes repel so this is going to pull the this positive charge is going to pull a negative charge over to this side the same amount it's going to be positive over the opposite side, okay? So again, opposite attracts. So the only thing that can move is electrons. So you have a positive charge. It's going to pull electrons from over here to this side. So the, 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 this side is going to be negative, and this side is going to be positive because the electrons are moving from over this side over here so this is negative this is going to be positive if you touch this this side of the 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 the, the conducting sphere this is called grounding remember what we said about grounding grounding is a huge reservoir of electrons and it 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 if you if 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 you ground a charge object it because it, charge object, you can produce what we call neutrality. So when you touch this portion, 
remember you you just just this side of the 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 sphere you're gonna touch you're gonna it is this side is positive so what's gonna happen you're gonna have electrons moving from your body to over here to neutralize this 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 side okay so you're gonna neutralize this side so this side is not gonna be positive anymore it's gonna be neutral okay okay so while the balloon is near the sphere is touched so you're grounded so you provide electrons at this point there's a movement of electrons electrons are gonna move from the individual to the sphere so so electron is going to move into the sphere from the ground so whatever the ground is it's going to move that direction okay all right so a ground is going to provide neutrality okay so it's gone and a ground is a conducting uh material so it's gonna you'll get electrons moving now to this positive sphere all right so i i i think i think we have I think we have some understanding <clears throat> of that concept, so let's, all right, let's go back, all right, so let's um, look at this, so we have, uh, these questions are dealing with um, the the uh, electroscope. So suppose that a negatively charged balloon is used to charge an electroscope by induction. So remember, we have charge by friction, you rub it, or you have charge by induction, you come close, but you're not in contact. Suppose that a negative charged balloon is used to charge an electroscope by induction. The procedural steps are described in the educational cartoon below. On the cartoon, draw orientation of the needle and indicate the location and type of excess charge in step two to, to five. Explain in terms of electron movement what is happening in each stage. All right, so let, let's analyze what's happening. <clears throat> so this is an electroscope. This is a needle electroscope. So in the neutral position, the needle is gonna be straight down, okay? because this, this, is, this needle is not going to have a charge, and then this vertical bar has no charge. So neutral objects are not going to attract or repel each other. You bring, you bring a negative charge uh, object here. So what's going to happen? It's going gonna, it's gonna to repel. You're going to have a repulsion of the electrons from the top down to the bottom like charges repel so this negative is going to push the electrons from the top it's going to go down to the bottom and then the needle is going to spread apart because the needle is going to have the same negative charge so the needle is going to spread apart if you still held that in place and you touch this so the needles are going to be negative remember let me just draw that so the needles are negative so they spread apart so the, the needles are gonna spread apart like that because they are both negative. If now you touch this, the, 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 if you touch this plate or the needle, anyone, electrons are gonna move because remember when you, this is what, what you, you, when you ground something, this is what you do. So when you touch this plate, electrons gonna move from the, the, the vertical, plate and the, 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 the needle is going to move through the, the ground, okay? It's going to move from these uh, conducting uh, objects into the ground. So electrons going to move from the needle and, th and this vertical bar to the ground. So it's going to lose its negative charge. So they're going to come back together. So in this, once you ground it, they're going to come back together, okay? So remember that the top was positive. So remember, let's let me just so re, so when you do that, the, the top is positive. When you touch it, 
the bottom, you're just touching the bottom. This is still going to be positive because you still have the balloon in place. When you touch the bottom, the electron is going to move from the needle and the plate into the ground. So this is going to become neutral, so the needle is going to fall back in place, vertical. And then when you remove the, the balloon, you still have an excess of positive charge because you remove the electrons. So the, the, the needle is going to spread apart again because once you remove your negative balloon, you still have posit excess positive charge. So the electron is going to move and try to overcome or to neutralize this positive charge. So you're going to have an excess of positive charge. So the needle is going to move apart again. Okay? So you this is charging by induction. When you charge by induction, you bring a charge in close proximity to uh, a, 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 a conductor. A conductor. By bringing it, in, you're not touching it. By bringing it in close proximity, it, it's, if the negative charge is going to repel the electrons. Electrons are going to come to the bottom because both of these things are negatively charged. They're going to spread apart. The needle is going to spread apart. Okay, so needle spread apart, but you touch it. So you're going to remove the electrons from down here. They're going to go through the ground. If it's an individual that touch it, it's going to move through the individual. So it's going to lose its negative charge. So the, the needle is going to come back together. When you remove your balloon now, because you still have your positive charge up top, electrons are going to try to neutralize this uh, positive charge. So you're going to get an overall positivity in the system. And because the needle is now positive, the vertical bar is positive, they have the same charge, they're going to spread apart. So the needle is going to be diverted. So that is, again, that's charged by induction. And it's important to follow that concept. The concept is very important. All right, so let's, so let's do question six. All right, uh, a negatively charged balloon is brought near a neutral conducting sphere, as shown below. As it approaches, the charge within the sphere will distribute itself in a very specific manner. Which of the following diagrams below properly depicts the distribution of charge in the sphere? Charge by induction, we come close to the sphere it's going to repel, like charges repel, opposite attracts. So it's going to repel the negative electrons on this side. So this side is going to be positive, and this side is going to be negative. So this is correct. You're going to repel the electrons on this side, and they're going to go over to the other side. So we polarize this uh, sphere. The sphere, this is not charged. This is not a charged sphere. It's polarized because you have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. So it's polarized. You're going to push the, 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 the electrons from, from this side, from the left side to the right side because they're, they're same charge. So this is going to be the right side, sorry, the left side is going to be, the left side is going to be positive, the right side is going to be negative, okay? Opposite attracts and like repel. All right, so I think we got that. All right, so this, all right, another question, question number seven. A positive charge piece of styrofoam is placed on a table. So positive charged styrofoam, okay? A neutral aluminum plate is brought uh, near as shown below. While held above the styrofoam, uh, the aluminum plate is touched and grounded. So, okay. So this is our, um, this is our styrofoam, which is positive. So this is styrofoam, which is positive charge. So again, this is an, you know, it's an it, it's an insulating object, 
but it is it is charged positive. So you can charge uh, an insulating object. So this is charged positive. So this is an aluminum sphere. Sorry, this is an aluminum uh, pie, and your own this this right up here is an insulating object. So you it, you 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 it's held by an insulating object. So again, if this is positive, it's going to pull the electrons from up here down close to the styrofoam plate. So the so down below here is going to be negative because it's going to pull the electrons from the opposite pole. So in the plate, this is going to be negative. This is going to be negative. So it's going to have the same amount of negativity as positivity on the styrofoam. So down below is going to be negative. Up, up the top is going to be positive by the same amount because the electron is going to move from the top to the bottom. The only thing that can move is electrons. So the electron is going to move from the top down to the bottom. If you now touch the top, just the top, then electrons are going to move from, from you to the top. So the top is now going to lose its positive charge because it's going to gain electrons. So it's going to be neutral. The bottom is going to be negative because you didn't do anything to the bottom. The bottom is still going to be negative. So at this point, there is a movement of electrons, and electrons are going to move from the ground to the aluminum pie plate so so out of so electrons gonna move out of the um uh, aluminum plate into the ground no because it's positive it's positive so electron not gonna do that it's gonna move into the electrons gonna move into the ply pie plate from the ground yes because it's positive the top is positive so electrons gonna move from the ground into the pie plate. Remember, the ground is a source of electrons. And it, it, the, the, the purpose of a ground is to prov provide neutrality. All right, so I think we, um, I think we, we, we understand that, we got that. All right. All right, so we have, we have seen charge by Friction, we have seen charge by induction. Now we're going to look at charge by conduction. So friction, we rub, we rub off electrons from one object to the next. Induction, we come close and we polarize the object. And then if we ground the object, then we can leave a charge on the object. Charging by conduction is when a charge, when we have contact of a charged object with a neutral object. Charge by conduction is when you come in contact. You have a charged object and it comes in contact with a neutral object. So this is what we're talking about. And, you know, so if we say, okay, so we look at the, the, the electroscope and the charge sphere below. So we have a negatively charged uh, sphere, and we touch. Now we don't stay at a distance. We touch this electros electroscope. So electrons are now going to move from your sphere into the electroscope. So the whole electroscope is going to be negative, and because the needle and the vertical plate have the same charge, which is negative, they're going to move apart because, again, like charge is going to repel. So, and then if you remove the sphere, the electrons are already on the electroscope, so the electroscope is going to be charged negatively. Okay? It's going to be charged negatively. Okay? Um, important thing you need to remember, if you have a charged object and you come close to a sphere, if you don't touch a sphere, you polarize the sphere. That is, you're going to push the electrons from this end over here. 
this is what we call induction. However, if you touch, if you touch the, 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 the sphere, you have a conducting sphere. If you touch a conducting sphere, the electrons are going to move. They're going to move from the, the charge object to the sphere. And then when you remove, <clears throat> when you remove your rod, the sphere is still going to be negative. A very important concept that you need to get is that electrons always want to distance themselves from other electrons. Electrons always want to run away from other electrons because they have the same charge. They don't like each other. So that is why once they have, if you touch this and they realize that they can move because if this is a con conductor, they can now move. So they will quickly move over here because since they're in excess over here, they're going to move over to the conducting sphere. And then when you remove your, your the, the object that, you, that was charged, then the, the sphere is going to have an overall negative charge. So that charge by conduction. All right. So we can, uh, we, and the, you know, if you look here, we have, we, 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 did, we, we look at charge by conduction using a negative charge object. Now, if you have a positive charge object, so you have a neutral object, uh, conducting sphere, so this is a conducting material, and this is an insulator. If you have a positive charge object, so this is our aluminum plate with um, a, an insulator there. So if we have a negative, sorry, if we have a positive plate, positive plate, and we touch our conducting sphere, electrons are going to be attracted to this positive uh, uh, charge object. So electrons are going to move from your sphere over to the positive charge object because remember, electrons love positivity. They don't like each other. So they're going to jump over here. They're going to jump. They're going to move. They're going to move over here and they're going to cancel out some of the positive charge. So because the electrons are moving from the sphere, the sphere is going to be positive. Okay? So you can charge a sphere positively by, coming, by touching it with a positive charge object because the electrons are going to move from the sphere. They love positivity. They jump over, the, they jump over here. And by moving from the sphere, they're going to leave the protons uh, uh, unaccompanied for or unaccounted for. So you're going to have a, a greater positivity. So this is charged by conduction. Okay. Again, you know, you have a positive charge, a neutral object. So when we say neutral object, that, that means it has the same amount of positivity as negativity, the same amount of protons as electrons. Okay, but if you touch the object, the, 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 the electrons which can move, they're going to jump over because they see this as greener pastures. They are more available uh, positivity, more available opposite sex. So they're going to jump over, you know, just like anything else. They're going to jump over because they want to get some of the action over here. And by doing so, they're going to leave, you know, their positivity that they had over here. So this object is going to become positive. Okay? But if you look closely, the same amount of electron that jump over here. So if you have, so when you, again, when we say neutrality, if you have four protons, or say you have five protons, you're going to have five electrons. When you touch it, if only one, uh, if only one, um, sorry, if all five electrons jump over, if all five electrons jump over, so they're going to pair up with five protons. So, and then, you know, because the five electrons jump over, this is going to have a, a, a five available protons. So it's because five electrons move. So it's going to have five available proteins. So essentially, they're going to have, this will have the same charge as 
the 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 electrons moving over. Okay, so this one gonna have less uh, positive charge because the electrons move over, and then this gonna have positive charge. All right, so there's something we call the law of conservation of charge. And simple, you know, if we want to put it in simple terms, you know, you cannot create charge, you know, uh, you know, your, your charge can be transferred, but if you transfer charge, you know, the overall charge before the process is the same as the overall charge at the end of the process. Again, if you look here, we send five electrons over here. So <clears throat> this is gonna lose, this object is gonna lose five electrons, but this is gonna gain five electrons. So this is gonna be positive by five, and this is gonna be uh, less positive by five. You, you transfer five electrons, you can, you can multiply the charges. You know, only five electrons move from the neutral object over here. So this going to gain five electrons and this going to lose five electrons. You know, that is the conservation of, of uh, charge. Um, again, you know, just, just, just as, a, as a little side um, discussion, you can have charge by lightning. And what charge by lightning is, is, you know, if you have a, a charge insulating object near a conductor. So you have a charge insulating object close to a conductor. You, you, sometimes you don't have to touch the object. You don't have to touch the object. Electrons can burst through the space between the two the insulating uh, object and the conductor. So you don't have to actually touch. Sometimes electrons can burst through that space. And the reason why it bursts through the space is that the air in between the object is ionized. And as and being ionized, it acts as a conductor. So this is what we're talking about. So if you have a charge object here, and say this is a, you know, your electroscope, you don't, before you even touch it, electrons sometimes can jump from the, 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 the charge rod here to the electroscope. And it's not that the electron is jumping. The, the air between the two objects is ionized. And by ionized, it acts as a form of conducting material. Um, so charge by lightning can occur with or without contact. Uh, and you'll hear a crackling sound and you see a flash of light in the dark suggesting that there's a you know you have a charging process going on uh, we call it charge charge arc or, sp or spark in bet um, between the objects um, we have some questions that um, let's see I think we should quickly go over these so that we um, we we you know, the next time we can just finish up. All right, so if you have a neutral metal sphere, neutral metal sphere is touched by a negatively charged metal rod. So a neutral metal sphere is touched by a charged negative rod. As a result, the sphere will be, and the rod will be, uh, select the two answers in their uh, respective orders. So let's draw what we're talking about. So we have a negative rod. So this is a rod, okay, and it's negative, okay, and we have a, uh, 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 so a charge, uh, so a, a metal sphere, all right, so this is our metal sphere, and it's on a base, okay. All right, so this is a metal sphere. So a metal sphere is touched by a charged metal rod, okay, a negative charge. So if you use this metal rod and touch a sphere, so when you touch a sphere, the electron is going to move from your 
your your your your um your charge metal rod to the sphere so the, the sphere is gonna gain the electrons as a result the sphere will be the sphere will be negatively charged right so if say for instance it has say say it has three negative the, 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 this rod of three it may only give up one of its negative charge so electrons may one electron may come over here right but the, the 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 sphere will be negative and the metal rod will be negative okay the important thing about charge by conduction the same charge that you're using will produce the same charge on the object that you're trying to uh, charge so if this was positive when you come in contact and you touch this object it will be positive if this is negative and you come and you touch this object it's going to be negative all right, let's move on. It's not that you're transferring protons, it's just a process. You do not, protons are not going to move. Protons do not move. It is the electrons which move which gives rise to all these things. It's an important point you need to get. All right, so let's look at question two. Question two. All right, so you have a neutral metal sphere. It's touched by a negatively charged metal rod. During the process, electrons are transferred uh, from 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 the to the and acquire a uh, acquires a charge. So there are three parts of this question. So let's draw it again. You have to draw these things. So you have a neutral sphere. So let's draw it. So you have a neutral sphere. A neutral sphere. So neutral sphere, you have the same amount of protons as electrons. So it's a neutral sphere, and it's on a base, an insulating base. A so neutral sphere uh, is touched by a charge. It's touched by a negatively charged metal rod. So, all right. so this is a charged metal rod. Okay, and it's negative. We know that once you touch it, it's going to get the electrons. So the electrons are transferred from the rod to the sphere, and it's acquired a negative charge. Let's see which one of these applies. So it, uh, the, the, the electrons are transferred from the, the, um, the, the charge rod, okay? So it's moved from the charge rod. Uh, to the neutral sphere, and the neutral and, and it requires a negative charge. You have to understand the process. Okay, all right. Let's move on. So it's, the, the electrons are going to move from the rod to the sphere. The sphere is going to be negatively charged. All right. Let's move on. Question three. All right. So. Question three, a neutral metal sphere is touched by a positively charged metal rod. During the process, protons are transferred from the to the, and the, 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 the protons are never transferred. So we know that this is nonsense. We don't even have to move on. The only thing that's going to move is electrons. Protons do not, protons not going to move. All right, protons are not going to move. All right, so let's do... Question four. All right, question four. A metal sphere is electrically neutral. It is touched by a positively charged rod. As a result, the metal sphere becomes charged positive. We know that positively. Which of the following occurs during the process? And they say, list all that applies. All right, so again, let's draw it. You always draw these things. Okay, so you have a a neutral, electrically neutral sphere, electrically neutral spheres on a base. All right, just bases, just pretend that this base is, is very uh, flat and look nice. Okay, it is touched by a positive charge rod. So let's get our rod. So our rod is positively charged. So if we, 
So it's touched. So if we take this rod and touch it, what's going to happen is electrons are going to jump. Because remember, electrons are just like individuals. They always want nice things. So this looks nice to them. They're going to jump over. Okay. The electrons are going to move from the sphere to, 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 to the positive. I think it's greener pastures. So by moving, by doing that, then the, this sphere is going to be positive because it's going to lose its electron. As a result, the, the, the sphere become positive, right? Which of the following occurs during the process? The one that occurs is um, the metal sphere gains some protons. No, remember, protons not going to move. So it's not going to gain anything. It doesn't get in protons don't move electrons are transferred from the rod uh, uh, from the rod to the sphere electrons are transferred from sorry from the sphere to the rod right so again this is positive the electrons over here think you know this is heaven so they're gonna jump over opposite attracts so by doing that they're gonna leave the sphere positive so yeah Electrons are transferred from the sphere to the rod. So that occurs. The sphere loses electron. Yeah, because if the electrons are moving from the sphere to the rod, then the sphere loses electrons. And then the overall charge of the system is conserved. Yeah, because the same amount of electrons that move over here, okay, you're going to have the same amount of positivity left behind. So the, the, the overall charge is conserved. All right, um, the protons protons don't move, so you, you don't even have to move for positive ele electrons are not positive. Electrons are negative, so these two doesn't apply. So we're gonna stop here, and hopefully we'll have about one more lecture in static electricity before we complete um, the course in static uh, electricity, and it's gonna be important for you to. To, to, to follow, you know, static electricity from the beginning of the lecture because the, the next topic is going to be electric force. And this is where, you know, you need all the prior knowledge to, 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 to answer the, to, well, to, to comprehend.